Welcome, welcome, welcome to Kickstarter Radio 102.4. I'm your host, Lipstick Paddy, and today we're looking at Tales from the Loop, the board game. Wow, the RPG steps up into the board game. This is mega, mega exciting. And you know what? This is also an Amazon Prime um, TV series that's come from it. It's so successful. And this board game is being made by the people that did the RPG. So we, we are honored to get this board game. We are honored. So let's go to the intro. Get ready for a unique world. The works of Simon Stalinghaf have stunned the world. Now, experience the world of the loop in a new way. The 80s that never was takes a new form. Beautiful art coming to your tabletop. As a cooperative board game, Diving deep into the mysteries of the loop that only the kids can solve working together. An RPG in a box with branching storylines, a campaign like no other. This is Tales from the Loop, the board game. So can we expect a good story? Well, the writer is an any winner from the Tales of the Loop role-playing game. And um, they've also done the Tales from the Loop starter set. Um, also the Alien RPG core book. Big one, that one. Forbidden Lands, also an any winner, an Origin Award nominee. Um, also done Simbarum. Origin Award nominee 2, uh, Corollis, judging spotlight from 2017 in the Ennies. <laughs> Mutant Year Zero, a silver award in 2015 from the Ennies 2. Oh my goodness, we are in royalty of the RPG here. Let's see what this board game's like on Kickstarter. Let's go right to it now. The next social stretch goal on KISS 102.4 is the 250 subscriber. Subscribe today and unlock new music that will change the music in all the videos in the future. You could be part of the evolution. Alright, Tales from the Loop the board game. This is very exciting. I shall tell you why. Yeah, we are stepping into Simon Stallenhag's stunning retro sci-fi world. Yeah, based in 1980. Oh, yeah. Where alt-universe technology is abundant in the world. More than it is in our world. Yes, indeed. Some minis coming from Paolo Parenti's Dust Studio. Yeah. Well... Incredible first day yesterday for this um, project. It has already doubled its goal, which is phenomenal. Already over a thousand backers in the first day, which is great. And what's nice about it is they've not updated this um, image here, which is like, oh, funded in the first 24 hours, 200% funded. You know, that those kind of gimmick things that draw you in. This is drawing people in on the strength of the IP. And the, this game, an RPG, was so popular it went to an Amazon series original. And now it's going to a board game. But the board game is being done by the same peeps that did Tales from the Loop. So you, you are getting this from... From the you know from the actual people that are writing the IP. So very exciting indeed. <clears throat> Three updates already in 24 hours is it pretty exciting. This could be a good ride through the 30 days. No FAQ as of yet though. 
Hopefully the FAQ grows organically from the comments as you know it should be frequently asked questions so if people are asking questions or interesting questions put them in the FAQ. Perfect. Now the team here Freer Ligan mainly RPG specialists and this is the you know the first foray into a board game and um, we'll see how that turns out and beautiful art you can see a robot worker here kind of gives you the vibe of Scythe although Scythe may have actually taken its inspiration from Tales from the Loop so there is that um, so yeah alternate version of Scandinavia in the 90s and 80s technologically technology has invaded the tranquil landscapes to form a new universe of eerie and nostalgic. Um, yeah, it has a little bit of a Stranger Things vibe where there's a um, particle accelerator underneath the ground, which is the loop, and because of the stuff is basically coming out of the coming out of the loop, basically, it's monsters and potential strange things are happening. All right. <clears throat> now the minis are standies, but they're actually fairly cool. The art on them is fairly cool, and again, there's no combat between them, so I'm okay with standies. Um, minis coming for the robots, though, which is nice. Excuse me. Now standard edition is sixty bucks. The price is kind of important as we'll see how much content we're getting here. And you can go deluxe if you want your minis painted, which is kind of a nice option. Although the deluxe edition seems expensive at the minute because it's only four minis painted for an extra $40. However, if it unlocks new minis, it's going to go in the deluxe. So it'll make you know, it's, it's basically you're paying $10 per mini to be painted, but it hopefully will unlock more minis um, in the stretch goal and it'll make the deluxe more attractive to um, to actually go up, upgrade to. We'll just have to keep our eye on the campaign, as we always do on the channel. All right. <laughs> Yeah, you get a little bit of the lore here um, about the um, the loop, the mysterious creatures stalking the land and machines not working in strange ways. Um, and yes, at the minute you're getting four scenarios and essentially the scenario plays out, it begins with you at school and you're going to get a your first skill check at the school where you're trying to influence something which will give you a bonus during the day when you go on your adventure and <clears throat> the board here I'll bring it up um, so we can get a better look of it it's fairly interesting the the right hand side is the safer zone you can go around that in one you know it takes one movement to walk on that if you go to the left side of the board or the west side um, this is kind of the orange markers that is um, like security high security there so it costs double movement to go in there um, but the, the board itself very very nice beautiful I, I like the look of all the locations and um, you can get around on here getting the buzz getting a lift off your parents and fun things like that you can certainly get around fairly easily and um, as the adventure rolls out you, you see these big cards here um, on the board here with letters on if you go to those letters on the map you will then uncover whatever the um, card says and it's then going to be like choose your own adventure where you have to choose to do it you know you can ignore it if you wish but if you wish to partake in it you, you have to do a skill check and you can work as a team if you're both on the same location to 
help each other on that skill check. And doing these actually involves the story, so it is kind of important. The robots on the map, they will move automatically um, during or after the school phase because the school cards um, are very cool. Um, once you've done a school day, that school card gets turned and it can, the school card will then operate the minis on the board. I'll show you a card here where you can kind of see um, that these two things here, you've got the worker robot and you've got the defense robot here and the, let, the arrows are basically telling you where you need to move them to. Um, so that happens at the start of every every round. All right, lots of stuff going on here. The boards, I'll show you the boards when we go, go down, and the robot boards as well. But yeah, it is a table spread. How it looks on the table does look really nice. Pops really big. Really do like it. Yeah. Um, now the rule book. I'll we'll talk about that when we get to the bottom of course and um, and yeah now these item cards these are fairly interesting you can see some sneakers here are trainers in British and they are going to give you a bonus to the roll um, you've got these anomaly cards these are like treasure cards they're like super item cards which are you know, they're kind of the best items you can get and they can give you a massive bonus um, during certain skill checks. Got these custom dice and in order to get a success you need to get a six on the die which is a little tough isn't it? You've got a one in six chance of rolling. <laughs> um, but it, it, it is interesting because if your character is particularly good at a skill you're going to be rolling five and let's say they've got an item on them. Let's say you need to get speed. You're doing a speed check and you've got the sneakers. You're going to be rolling six dice then. So it's a really good dice chucker um, for the skill checks. Um, right, let's have a look at these character sheets. I'll bring up a character sheet here and we can discuss it. All right, we're looking at Lena here, the popular girl. Um, the home at the top, just saying the, her, where her home location is. You have to go home at the end of every day. Um, if you don't go home at every day, you're going to upset your parents and the favour track will go down. If they're happy, there will be a free lift in the car. You can see this at the top left, the favour. And um, if they're unhappy, you lose that perk and... Um, yeah, they can get unhappy if you're not home on time and uh, things like that. Um, the time cubes that you get per day, they can be spent by moving around, exploring a card on, a, on the map, getting the buzz, um, hacking, um, looking at something, like investigate, and also go to sleep. And... Um, also, this character is very good at charming, and she, but she is very slow. So, if if you have to do something that's three dice, if she's if she has to charm someone, that's five dice, and if she has to s slow something, if some if something needs speed, she is slow, so she will only get one die. So she's not going to be doing any of them. She has an iconic item, which is the Walkman and uh, she can use this indefinitely it doesn't get thrown away whereas other items if you use them or combine them they they can be spent as it were so um there is that to know um also you do get a chance to re-roll once if your rolls go bad um that costs um it comes on this left hand side if you if you when you do your first re-roll that makes you exhausted afterwards if you do another one it'll make you upset and uh, if you do another one, it will make you scared, and then it could make you injured if you keep trying to re-roll. So um, there's that kind of push it look aspect um, on the character board. So yeah, it's very cool.
And um, the other characters you can pick are Stefan the Jock. He is tough, but he's dim-witted, so intelligence rolls he's going to be poor at. We've got Nils the Weirdo. Um, he's very brave, but he's weak in strength. And the other character, Veronica, she's a metalhead. Um, she's very quick, but she is a scaredy cat. Oh, poor Veronica. <laughs> Now, I'm just going to bring up the machine sheets and um, look at these. The worker here, um, he's pretty cool. You can see he's got a combo to tow, tow things. So, potentially, you could hack this robot to help you um, tow an item in the world. So, these can actually be used. And... Um, Notice at the bottom the firewalls here um, to hack through them. Um, it's actually pretty cool. So this guy is just a, a worker. Um, the warden here, his combo is power. So if you need to power something up, you could potentially hack this guy, move him to the location and use him to power a device up. Very, very cool. Warden also has two firewalls to get through. Now the watchdogs, it looks like there's two of these, two on the mini anyway, these are very very tough to hack, three on the firewall now, hit and run combo, don't even know if you can use these, they are certainly to keep away from, and the last one is the Amat 2 Soldier. <laughs> They've actually got three firewall too, so maybe they can be hacked and maybe have to be hacked, but um, a hacker can spend a time token to wreck an adjacent unarmed machine. Um, so yeah, check the rulebook to, to read about wrecked, and it does have a combo so it can blow things up if you hack it. And you can even see here on the art, the child is climbing up. <laughs> The climbing up the uh, robot, so yeah, potentially it is hack. We you know you will be hacking the, the, so it's pretty cool. Now these rumor cards, you've got uh, you've got eighty of these. These are going to be like say driving the story and um, diary cards, lots of reading and um, only four scenarios at the minute. We'll see more in the stretch goals. But it certainly is a kind of choose your own adventure, choose your own path, branching storylines. It's got the RPG narrative going through and um, and of course it's in this kids world so it is this kind of kids RPG. Gives you a little bit about the bots here, they're very cool. Talks about pre-painted. <laughs> There's an interesting gameplay demo here, um, just to see how it rolls, and it advertises this print and play, which is um, the place to go to find out most of the images. Um, so there you go. You can see Lena here with her Walkman. Very nice. Now stretch goals. What we want to see is scenarios. So <laughs> interesting, the number four stretch goal here, the dinosaur mini and the bonus scenario. Um, the dinosaur will actually be an add-on. And that is the question then, if it becomes an add-on, is it not included in the painted set for the deluxe version? Ooh. I don't know, we'll just have to see how these stretch goals roll out and how the scenarios push. But, um. But yeah, I do like. The art is very, very cool on the. on the kids. <laughs> He's got this kind of bird on his nest. I wonder if that does anything. That would be fairly nice. So here's the add on section. And uh, do you want some more minis? Extra minis? <laughs> 
and they've got all the RPGs that they worked on as add-ons too, which is potentially helping push up um, the money in it. But you can see lots of RPGs that they've been doing, and you're probably familiar with some of them if you you're interested in RPGs. There's a ton of them. Shipping seems to be fairly not too bad, 30 to 40. We don't know how big the box is going to be and um, and things like that. We'll look at that as we look at the end. And um, we've got the this is the the author and the artist um, Simon. And we got Martin here, who's the uh, game board designer. Super, super cool. All right, let's go to the rule book. All right, no front cover <laughs> on the rule book. It is an alpha build, as they say. And it is specifically from the print and play set. So you've actually got to go in the print and play section to get this downloaded. But it's it's very, very well put together, I must stress. It looks more beta than alpha. And um, here you can see the dials on the board at the top. Um, they are indicating if you do something wrong or you do something good. And the weekly schedule there also. But, you know, it's it's nice how you've got a lot of images on here. I think it's very good. Explaining everything that's going on. Explaining the different card types. And, um, yeah, it, it's, it's very well done. Setting up the game here, that would have been nice over two pages. Um as opposed to one page it is all it is much appreciated when you see the board on the table um, across two pages it just you know makes it easier but yeah it's everything's numbered on how to set it up on the table ready to go and yeah doesn't leave anything out. I mean, this is coming from an RPG company, so you know they've got to explain everything going on. So it's coming from a good heritage, and um, yeah, you'll see here that if, if somebody helps you out, you only get one extra die per helper. Ooh, I think that costs a time resource as well. Ooh. <laughs> The character tags then, you can be tough, clever, you can be quick, brave and charming. And uh, yeah, very good. Talks about the round, how it plays out. You notice that the movement here of the school cards, when the ones that are above here, they were, you know, last round, The new this round when you do the school card, it goes underneath it and it activates um, like, we, like we showed before. So yeah, it's, it's very, very cool. You've, got, you've certainly got a fantastic rule book um, with the exception of an FAQ at the end and an index. Um, yeah, definitely needs an index for certain. And um, yeah, very, very good. Very, very good. It's a great rule book. All right, let's jump back to the Kickstarter page. All right, Tales from the Loop looks great, doesn't it? I think some things that it's missing. One to five players. But the age of the... The age? What's the age limit? <laughs> Is this a great RPG for eight-year-olds? Ten-year-olds? How old can they be? It is very cool in that regard. Um, there's no front cover box that we can see yet. Um, which, you know, all this will, will come. 
it's due May 2021. So this is probably the longest one I've seen yet on Kickstarter this year. It's May next year. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, all we're really needing is more more scenarios. I think four scenarios is a little weak tea. And you can see here, each scenario takes 90 to 150 minutes. This is one massive meaty situation. This is, we're going playing role play and it's gonna be a four hour session. And they've not broke that down into a board game modern where we like things two hours. So just be careful coming in here that this could be a long session. Um, if you're playing it, It'd be interesting to see the time. It could be 90 minutes if you're solo and 150 if there's four of you. So hard to know that. Not many YouTubers playing it. You just got the one playthrough from the designer, which is cool enough to get you interested. And um, certainly it looks really cool. You got an RPG adventure, branching storylines and um, interesting theme interesting characters interesting how you spend the day um, it has everything unique about this setting it's super super cool and um, wow 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 another amazing kickstarter this week we are getting completely spoiled by designers out there what a year 2020s is and COVID-19 or not COVID-19 these kickstarters are all doing well which is great to see and and yeah hopefully this has sparked your interest in the project and you can come and follow it I'm probably going to hate me now for saying this but uh, please subscribe please I'm the worst YouTuber <laughs> um, no minimum pledge you know you can't I don't know why there's no minimum pledge because it's so far away that you know at least I'll ask them and we'll find out what the story is um, I don't think I would go for the deluxe edition at a hundred dollars um, the standard is seemingly enough here I think definitely I don't I'm, I mean the way these are painted that'd be so you know knock them out yourself <laughs> but um, that's just for me standard edition is what I recommend going in lots of people jumped on the uh, on the deluxe however but hey all right there you go Tales from the Loop mega mega exciting RPG could be based on kids I'll find out what the age group is and um, I'll let you know on Saturday show this week on but this and um, and when I do find that I'll update that in the description um, of, for the video so there is that well if you've been listening to the end I thank you so much for watching and uh, please check out other content on my channel and please comment in about this game what you think of it if you're backing it what you like about it uh, please share that it'd be fantastic and You've been listening to Kickstarter Radio 102.4. I'm your host, Lipstick Paddy. You take her, stay safe. And if you're solo gaming, try this one out. It's got a print and play. Go and play Tales from the Loop. If you've got a printer, you can totally try this game out. The team has so much confidence in the game. So, yeah, there you go. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>